You know, I've been waiting a long time to disconnect the microphone from my camera. It's been such a pain trying to do stuff in the bee yard, you're trying to make videos, and yet you've got this cord attaching you to your camera. Very, very annoying and made things harder than it really needed to be. About two weeks ago, I decided to purchase the Rode Wireless Go Mic, and that's what I'm using now. See the distance between me and the camera? Sounds pretty clear, don't it? I'll tell you, I'm amazed. And it took me a long time to actually click the purchase button. I kept going back to my cart, which I had the microphone added to, but I had a hard time clicking buy because this is about 200 bucks for this microphone. And depending on which one you have, it can be more. You see the white one, for some reason, looks like this is a little bit cheaper. Well, it's actually at least $80 cheaper than the black one. And they work just the same. Now, I guess the reason that people would want a black one is because if I unclip this microphone that I've got plugged in here, you can actually use the top of the receiver as a microphone. And being that they have black and white, you could actually clip it on your shirt. And if you wear dark clothing, then the black would blend in better. But personally, I plan to keep this out of sight and use this microphone that I have plugged into it, which I have clipped right here on my coat. Working pretty good, huh? Um, really amazed with it. I'm using this in combination with my GoPro. I have the Hero 8 and uh, it's working really well. I actually have the media mod for my camera. So I'll take a picture of it here, at my setup, and I'll show you what it looks like. So anyway, today we're not here to discuss microphones. I just wanted to share the excitement and the new freedom that I have with my camera. Today we're actually gonna be talking about installing bees in an apame hive. Actually, an apame hive and a wooden hive with the apame wood upgrade kit, wood hive upgrade kit. So I'm very anxious to share that with you. Um, today is April 28th, and right now we're sitting at about 48 degrees. Got chilly overnight. Yesterday we got into the 30s, so it was a lot colder yesterday morning. I know I'm ready for these cold mornings to go away, and uh, I'm ready to hang up the coat. So I installed the packages on April 24th, just four days ago, when we were in the 80s. It was a beautiful weekend, actually. Um, we had both days in the 80s, Saturday and Sunday. So I was able to take Sunday when I picked up the bees and get them installed. And I'm going to share that with you today. I'm also going to share um, my opinion on how packages should be shook. I know there's a lot of uh, people that say um, shaking packages is mean, it's cruel, um, it's not the way to do it. But I don't know that I agree with that just because I don't see any more dead bees in the bottom of my colony than I did in the bottom of the package when I picked them up. So I really believe that it's in the method of shaking your bees. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the packages and then we'll come back out here to where I'm gonna give you my opinion on how to appropriately shake a package. So check out the install and we'll meet back up out here with Ladybug. What we've got here is two three pound packages of bees, one here and one there. And we're going to get them set up in my Apame setups. On the far side, we've got the Enduro kit, which I have both the brood box and the deep super. We'll start off with just the deep brood box. And over here, I've got the Apame bottom board for wooden hives. And we're gonna get bees introduced into both of these. So let me go ahead and explain what we've got here. I've pulled a few frames out of the center of each. Over here, we've got just foundation in these frames. Over here, I've got some drone comb um, from last year left over. Um, before we can in insert bees into these, I want to remind everybody to go ahead and pull out this drawer, grab your red stopper, Remove your pollen trap. This is very important for a new colony, folks. Those bees need the, the pollen that they're gonna be bringing in to raise brood. So you don't wanna immediately start harvesting pollen. So make sure you put your stopper in 
and we'll do the same over here. We'll set these frames off to the side. We'll pull this bottom drawer out, get our stopper, put that back in, remove our pollen trap. And there, it's plugged off. On the front of the colony, colonies, I've got the entrance wide open on both of them. So now we are ready to install some packages. Um, I'm gonna give you a few tips along the way. Um, if you've never installed packages, get you a good spray bottle. Mix up some one-to-one -one sugar water. Let it cool and then spray your bees from the outside. You don't have to drench them, just give them a light soaking. A light soaking, that doesn't sound. A light drizzle, how about that? And what that will do is keep them from going airborne completely on you because they're too heavy to fly. We'll do the same here and same on this side. Let me throw my veil on and we will begin. Okay, so to begin, we're gonna open up our package. Get this here where you've got a good sight on what we're got going on here. So this is the top of the package. You can see this little piece of MDF covering the hole that the SERP can is in. We're simply gonna use our hive tool and pop that off, just like so. Now, this we can see this shipping strap. This shipping strap is actually holding the cage queen on the other end of the strap. So now we've got the cage queen released. This will fall when we lift that feed can up. So we wanna kinda of hold the food can and lift this up all at once. <clears throat> And what I do is I take the corner of my hive tool, keeping a hold of this shipping strap, and I'll stick it down between the can and the box, and I'll give it a slight pry on one side. And I'll do that all the way around until I've got full access to the feed can, which you can see now, my hands are fully on the can. Now what I wanna do is give the package a little drop, and that'll knock all the bees from the top of the box where they're clustered to the bottom. And it'll give me a chance to get the can out and pull out the caged queen. And then we'll immediately move over to the box and shake them in. So what I'm gonna do though, in this case, since I'm showing you and have to move the camera, is I'm gonna drop the box, remove the SERP can, remove the cage queen, and then I'm gonna take this and set back over the hole until I relocate the camera to dump the package. So here we go. Remember, I have to keep a hold of this strap. There, the bees fell down in. Now I can remove the can. And there's still gonna be some bees get out. You're not gonna stop them all. And there's our caged queen. Now, the next step for the caged queen is to find the end with the candy, which is obviously right here, and remove this cork. And the reason I say it that way is usually on these type of cages, there's a cork on both ends. And this one's for immediate release. We do not want to do that with packages. These bees are not used to this queen yet. So we got to give her time, give them time to adjust. So we want to move, remove the cork on the candied end. And usually I keep a little small finish nail with me, but I forgot to bring it. So let me see if I can get this out of here with the corner of my hive tool and not gouge myself. There we go, there's the cork. So the cork's out, they can get directly to the candy and start eating it and work their way to release the queen. Now I'm gonna relocate you so you can see the next step. Okay, so now I'm gonna take our cage queen, I'm gonna set her right here off to the side I'm going to give this another little drop, knock the bees down, take this lid off, and I'm going to shake the bees. You usually go from side to side. After I get the majority of them, I'll set this off to the side. You can see there's not a whole lot left in there now. 
and we'll start putting frames back in. Now between two of these frames, I am going to stick our caged queen. And I want to make sure that when I stick it in there, I'm not sticking this caged part or screened part against comb and blocking the bees from being able to smell her. Some people also believe you should never point this candied end down because sometimes they'll draw a queen cell over it. I have had that happen. Or they'll actually draw not a queen cell, I guess, burr comb. I got a little one-to-one -one sugar syrup mixed up that we will provide the girls. I'm gonna slide the rest of these frames over. And tomorrow we have a day of rain coming, so it'll be all inside work. I think that's how we'll do it. Next step, we're gonna smoke a little bit around the edges. That'll push these bees up and over, down into the box. It keeps you from squishing any when you put the inner cover on. Or, in the Apame case, your feeders are your inner cover. So you can see they've already found the entrance making a little a few orientation flights and I'll set this package right at the entrance any bees still in there will work their way out and up into the colony so now what we need to do is put a little bit of syrup in these feeders and being new to them I want to make sure I do this correctly because these have two ways of working they've got this way where it's syrup or they have this way where the bees can come up and over and into here to get candy. So it looks like I have them in correctly. The white solid part towards me. If you look this way, this is open down here. So the solid side towards the back, solid side towards the front. So I don't know that I have enough to fill these feeders all the way up today. I just fed the other nukes I have over in the nuke yard. But uh, I'm going to give them some to get started. Got to be quick and get that lid on there before anybody drowns in it. There we go. The lid is on. So let's do the same thing over here. Put that around. Put that around. Give them a little syrup. Got a bee crawling up my leg. It's never a good thing. Okay, so the next thing is, is to put the top cover on, like so. I can latch it down, of course, be secure, and, and not have to worry about it blowing off. Damn, that little girl got me right in the, in the calf. I hurt. First thing of the year, though. Love it. Okay, so now we'll go on to the other Apame Hive and uh, get everything set up for it. 
Okay, so it's going to be pretty much the same procedure, but I'm going to turn the package sideways this time. I don't know if it'll make any difference for you, but we got this off. And look, just sitting over here in the shade for the last hour, we've got ants. Makes me wonder about this new location where I've put these apame hives, but we'll see. If I have to deal with ants, then uh, I'm sure I can learn some uh, valuable information about taking care of ants around hives and share it with everybody else. Okay, so I've got the shipping strap in between my fingers. I've got the feed can in my hand. Now we're now ready to shake the bees. I'm gonna remove the can. I'm gonna remove the queen. And I'm gonna put a cover on. We've got our queen right here. It's always a good idea to take a look and make sure she's doing all right in which case she's doing wonderful now we'll pop this cork out of the candy end like so set the queen down here now i'm going to relocate the camera so you can watch me install this package of three pound package into my apame enduro hive Okay, so we'll set the cage queen here. We'll give this another tap. Remove the lid. Shake the bees into the empty spot. Side to side. Side to side. A lot of people don't believe in shaking bees in like that. They think it's mean and violent. But I tell you, after all these bees climb up on frames, you're not going to see any dead bees in there except for the ones that were dead in the package. So, I'm not convinced. I mean, I don't like to bang it down each time I bang it on the box each time, but you can get a little violent that way, I guess. And I think for this queen... We're going to place it between two frames like so. Kind of sandwich it that way. Since I got it sandwiched all to one side, I don't see these frame spacers working. So I'll have to put these on after the queen emerges from her cage and I'm able to remove it. Then I can center the frames up a little bit more. Top feeders on. It's tongue again. That's two. Sometimes you lose a bee. You know, I had one trapped under there. I can wait for it to get out or wait for 10 more to get in. That's how I feel. So I just went ahead and trapped it in there. I hate to say I did, but I'm guilty, folks. There, she climbed out. So now we can put the top cover on. I actually think those frame rests, or spacers might just stay right there. Can lock the lid down. And we can sit back and enjoy the bees in our Apame colonies. These I'll probably get out of the weather pretty cool I'm very excited about having these colonies having a chance to try them out 
could actually turn that to an entrance, but I don't want to make that a habit of them entering there. So we'll keep it down here. Might crank these down a little bit so they're not so wide open. And do the same over here. There we go. Pretty excited about having these folks. We got a new backdrop too. We got my cows bedded down right there. Goats are probably in the barn hiding from the sun. Here we go. Two three pound packages installed and the Apame bottom board, wooden hive kit, hive, and the Apame Enduro kit. Okay, so what'd you think? Bees look pretty happy with their new setup, don't they? I know I was very anxious to get the bees installed and uh, be able to sit back and watch them. So, let's talk about shaking in a package. I see a lot of people shaking the package straight up and down like this. That's not the appropriate way to shake a package, folks. Um, your bees over here on this side and on this side are definitely not gonna hit the hole in the middle when you're shaking straight up and down. You need to do a side to side shake so that when you do the actual shake, any bees on this side will fall across the hole and come out. It's not a vigorous shaking up and down. That is kind of cruel. Your goal is, is to shake the bees out of the package, not to shake the shit out of them, okay? Sorry about the curse word there, but I mean, I literally see people on YouTube doing this. Just vigorously shaking straight up and down. And I'm thinking, what, what is their train of thought when they're shaking straight up and down? You're not going to get the, the response that you want when you've got bees on this side of the hole and on this side of the hole. So you've got to do the side to side motion. That is how you would appropriately shake out a package. Um, now I want to discuss a couple plants that I'm seeing um, bloom. First of all, my red bud over in the bee yard, it's in full bloom. Um, dandelions popping up everywhere. Honeysuckle now has buds on it. So I don't look for it to be too long before it starts to pop open. Apple trees, full bloom. Peach tree, done and bloomed. Um, so lots of different sources out there for the bees to work right now. We just need the weather to cooperate. Um, these cold nights, the bees aren't able to do a whole lot because it's too cold for them to be up and moving around. So we need some warmer nights and I don't want to rush right into summer because I'm not a big fan of 90 degrees like I used to be. So let's take it slow, get to summer, and then heap up. Um, the tradition here, the last few years, it seems like by the end of May, we're hitting 90s. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just miserable. But anyway, that's my input on shaking a package and the sources I am seeing for the bees to work. Um, if you have any questions or comments about anything you've seen in this video, feel free to leave that down in the comments section below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, throw me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please smash that subscribe button um, and make sure you click on the little bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. Clicking any of these buttons will give you warm fuzzy feelings the rest of the day. It really will. You'll feel terrific. So try it. Click on one of them buttons and see how you feel. Thanks for watching folks and we'll see you next week.